Hello, I'm PC, and I have a personal message from Steve Jobs to all of you developers that I'd like to deliver now. Take the rest of the year off. That's right, take a long vacation. Just relax those big brains for a while. Steve and I agree that we can go ahead and stop making seamless software that just works. Let's let the Mac users experience compatibility problems and viruses and error message that builds character. Uh, instead, you should work on your tans, maybe tend to your compost pile, discover what makes you you, you know, your poetry, your art. If you want, you can help out on Vista. We could, we could use some help there. And Steve says that's fine. He doesn't like to see Microsoft so far behind. Oh, and uh, speaking of Vista, uh, widgets, gadgets, completely different. They are their own thing. It's just like Aqua. I mean, um, Arrow. So stop. No more announcements, nothing. Whatever else you've been working on, you can just stop now. Steve and I are eye to eye on this one. We go way back. Went to the Big Island together last spring, actually. Long walks on the beach. A lot of karaoke. It's quite a hoot. Uh, I remember one uh, night. Uh, what are you, what are you oh. doing, PC? Who, who uh, are you talking to? Just uh, getting ready for our next commercial. Meow, meow, meow. Welcome to WWDC 06. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, we've got a great week planned for you. Uh, you know, this year we've got 4,200 uh, registered attendees. This is the largest uh, WWDC ever. Uh, so thank you very much for making this a record event for us. And uh, there are folks here from 48 different countries. 48 different countries. And all of you are part of over three quarters of a million registered developers for the Mac now. This number has shot up dramatically in the last few years and we have three quarters of a million registered developers. So this week, what have we got in store for you? Well, we've got 140 sessions on just about everything having to do with OS X. And due to popular request, we've got 100 hands-on labs for you to get your hands on the latest and greatest stuff, including some stuff we're going to talk about this morning. And we've got over a thousand Apple engineers on site this week. Now, that's a ratio of one Apple engineer for every four attendees, right? So you should be able to get your questions answered this week. So. Um, today, for the presentation, uh, I have asked three of my colleagues to help me out. Uh, first up will be Phil Schiller, uh, Senior Vice President of Worldwide Product Marketing. And I've also asked Bertrand Serlet, Senior Vice President of Software Engineering. And Scott Forrestal, Vice President of Platform Experience. So these three guys are going to give me a hand today. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is give you an update on Apple Retail. Now, this is the latest flagship store that we opened. Uh, it's in New York on Fifth Avenue. It's gorgeous. It's a 32-foot glass cube without any metal infrastructure to hold the thing up. And uh, it's sitting right on Fifth Avenue. You go down these beautiful glass staircase into the store, and it's, it's just a phenomenal experience. It's been super successful. And if you have a chance to get to New York, I really encourage you to uh, go visit the store. This is one of 157 stores we now have. 157 Apple retail stores. Last quarter alone, we hosted 17 million visitors throughout our stores. 17 million people last quarter alone. And for those buying a Mac, 50% are new to the Mac. We are picking up lots of new customers. And even closer to your hearts, in the last 12 months, we have sold half a billion dollars of third-party products, of your products, in our retail stores. So that's a brief retail update. And now I'd like to get on to the subject of today, 
which of course is the Mac. Last quarter, we had our best Mac quarter ever. We shipped 1.33 million Macs last quarter. And we're really, really happy about this. But even better was the growth rate because the growth rate was dramatically faster than the rest of the industry, which means we're gaining market share. Now, yeah. the other great thing about last quarter was three quarters of the Macs we shipped were Intel-based. In our second quarter after shipping our first Intel product, three quarters of our products were Intel-based. And uh, I want to highlight that market share uh, 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 point by saying, you know, two of the great products we introduced last quarter, one of the great products we introduced last quarter was our MacBook, right? MacBook has been an incredible success and joins the MacBook Pro for our notebook lineup. Let's take a look at our notebook market share and how it's changed over the last six months. We started off at 6%. But look at what happened in April when we started to ship those MacBooks along with the MacBook Pros. 12% in June. The market share for US retail notebook sales doubled between January and June. So this is the kind of growth we're seeing. So again, three quarters of the products Intel-based. We announced our first Intel products in January jumped on board some great new technology from Intel. This is Intel, Intel CEO Paul Adelini handing us our first wafer in January at Macworld. And in the first two quarters, we transitioned almost all of our products over to Intel, except for one. <laughs> and that is the Power Mac. Well, today, the Power Mac is going to fade into history. And here to tell us, here to tell us what's going to take its place is Phil Schiller. Phil? Hey, Steve. Thank you. Oh, well, good morning, everybody. I am so excited. I get to be the very first one to introduce all of you to the brand new Mac Pro. This is the Mac that so many of our highest end customers have dreamed of. The brand new Mac Pro is going to be based on Intel's Xeon chipsets. The latest Xeon chips, also known in the industry as Woodcrest. These are ama amazing microprocessors. These incredible new processors are based on the latest core design, the core twos that, that you've heard about lately, the new microarchitecture. They are all dual core. They run at speeds up to three gigahertz. They have really large four megabyte shared L2 caches. They have a 128 bit vector engine that's even faster now than the velocity engine that replaces in our product lines. And for our highest end customers of features they've really wanted, they're 64 bit. Yes, these are great, great microprocessors. And like the other brand new Intel parts we've been putting into our products, they deliver tremendous performance per watt. And this is going to be really important, not only in notebooks and thin desktops, but even here in the pro space. If you compare this performance per watt to the G5 and even the current Opterons, what you see is tremendous power for each performance for each, each watt of power up to three times the performance in a Xeon that we got in the G5. This is an incredible jump in performance. So this new Intel Xeon chip is an amazing processor to put into our products. But in every Mac Pro, we're going to put two of them. Yes. All Mac Pros, quad Xeon performance. Now the product we're replacing is no slouch. This is the fastest Mac we had ever made, the Power Mac G5. So let's compare that performance. The fastest Mac ever, the, the G5 quad product that we were replacing, and the new quad Xeons. We're going to use Spec Int, 
as a performance metric of what you can get out of these systems. And you see it goes from 54 now up to 115. That's a 2.1 times faster integer performance. It's a big jump in performance for our highest end systems. And in floating point from 48 to now 76, that's 1.6 times faster in floating point performance as well. These are screaming fast machines. And the new king of the hill for the Mac is the new Mac Pro with quad Xeon performance. It is twice as fast as the machine it replaces. Now how about everyday applications that our professional customers use? What performance uh, increases are you going to see there? Well, we've taken a bunch of the high-end apps they use, our customers use for imaging and 3D and, and audio, and what you see is 1.4, 1.6, 1.8 times faster, depending on what you do. So real-world major performance increases. In fact, there's an application many of you in this room all use and rely on, and you want even faster performance there, and that's Xcode, and look at that. 1.8 times faster to build your applications. So this Xeon chip is a great chip. And it really hooks up into a system bus with tremendous performance. Each of those chips sits on its own 1.3 gigahertz front side bus, delivering an amazing 21 gigabytes per second of processor bandwidth in the system. And it has a very fast memory system as well. Four channels, 256 bit wide, 667 megahertz memory, up to 16 gigabytes in the system. That's twice as wide as the memory bus in the Parmac G5 and faster. Now, performance per watt means we need less cooling systems inside the box, too, which means we can do more with the space we have. Yes. So we've doubled the number of drives inside the Mac Pro to now four hard drives up to two terabytes of internal storage. And a most requested feature, we've added a second optical drive for our Pro customers as well with all the space we gained back from not having all that cooling inside. And we've increased the front I.O. in addition to the back I.O. So now there's another USB. And FireWire 800 joins FireWire 400 on the front. If you look around at the back, we've got four PCI Express slots, all full length now. And if you look at that graphics slot at the bottom, again, because of the more space we have inside, we're able to make that a double wide slot. So if you use our highest end graphics cards, you don't use up any of your other PCI slots to do so. Now, we have the best enclosure in the business. This is a beautiful enclosure design. On the outside, it has all the same benefits as before. Inside, it's entirely new. So first of all, let me highlight where those four drive, goes, four drive bays go. It has a new drive carrier, so you can insert the drives, up to four of them, without any cables, without any tools. They just snap right in place. And just look at what we can do inside this beautiful enclosure. The Xeon processors, if you remember the G5, they took up most of the enclosure. The, G5, the, the, the Xeons now fit into a nice compact space, gives us room for eight fully buffered DIMMs, gives us four full PCI slots. You see the dual optical drive bays, just an incredible design and beautiful, simple access to it all. So this is an incredible machine. And we've had a lot of fun building great configurations for our customers. And with, the, with the, new, the new Mac Pro, for the first time, we can offer one standard killer configuration that our customers are going to love. So one standard configuration, and it's, a, it's an incredible, incredible config. First of all, dual 2.66 gigahertz, dual core Xeon, so quad, a gigabyte of fully buffered DIMMs, 250 a gigabyte hard drive, a great NVIDIA GeForce 7300 GT card with 256 megs of memory, a 16x super drive. This is an incredible configuration. One configuration, $24.99. So a great price point. Now, if you think about it, if you think about it, on the previous Parmac line to get into the quad processing configuration, the G5, it was $32.99. So not only is it twice as fast and better features, it's $800 less expensive. This is a great configuration. Now, I know what you're thinking. Apple makes the best computers, but they're usually more expensive. Right? That is a myth that we're going to continue to beat at and bust. And this is a great product to bust that myth. What if you were to compare this standard configuration against, I don't know, Dell? Similar configuration, about $1,000 more from Dell. So not only do we make better products, but they're also more affordable.
So let's bust that myth together. Let everyone know it's not true. Now, I said there's one standard configuration, and most of our customers really like to build their own configuration. So we've really worked on tremendous build-to-order uh, configurations and choices for our customers. Most customers go this route. First of all, you can choose what processor speed you want, all quad, 2, 2.66, and 3 gigahertz. So we said you can add up to 16 gigabytes of memory. You can add up to 2 terabytes of internal storage. You can have that NVIDIA graphics card, or you can upgrade it to a really great ATI Radeon X1900 card. Or if you really want the highest in graphics performance, a killer card from NVIDIA, the Quadro FX 4500 as well. Of course, you can add wireless to it with both Bluetooth and airport. On and on, you can make almost 5 million configurations <laughs> of the new Mac Pro. So one standard configuration, but endless possibilities. So that's the new Mac Pro. It's a quad Xeon 64-bit workstation. Yes. And the new Mac Pro will start shipping today. Yes. So now the Mac Pro joins the rest of these great products, and they've all transitioned over to Intel, and our transition's complete. We have cut over all of our product lines to Intel processors. We started, we started on January 10th, and we finished the transition today. Just 210 short days. And I don't know about you, but I really want to thank our engineering team for doing the impossible that no one else has done to cut over our product line. So thank you. Now, the Mac transition is complete. There is one other product that you don't really think of as a Mac, but it's a really important product in our product line, and that's XServe. Yes. Now, XServe is an incredible product, a one-use server that delivers great performance and value, and our customers do unbelievable things with it. Here's one example. This is a company called XTech. This is their data center. They call it the aquarium. Okay? <laughs> the aquarium is built entirely of XServes and XServe raids. It's an amazing site. And you may not know XTech, but chances are the majority of you, if not all of you, use them all the time, because if you've made a credit card transaction, chances are your transaction was validated, or not, on <laughs> XTech's data center on XServes. An amazing product, and the things customers do with XServe are incredible. And today, we're introducing an entirely new XServe. And like the Mac Pro, it's built entirely on Intel Xeons, with two of them to have quad Xeon performance, running at the same 2, 2.66, and 3 gigahertz performance. Now, this is an even bigger challenge with a one use server. For those of you who know our XServe product line, it wasn't a quad G5 like the Power Mac was. In fact, we couldn't even uh, have the thermal environment to put a dual core G5 in it. So the fastest you could get was a lower speed, two chip, single core G5. So you can imagine the performance comparison is incredible. <laughs> On spec, it goes from 21 to 115. 5.4 times faster. On floating point, from 20 to 76, 3.7 times faster. Incredible, incredible performance per jump, up to five times faster depending on the applications you run. It is a great product. In addition to amazing performance, we also have added some highly requested features. With more space in it now, thanks to the better thermal environment of the Xeon, we get to add redundant power. <laughs> We get to up the storage to 2.25 terabytes. And one of the features our customers asked for is remote management, so new software for lights out management so you can manage your servers from anywhere in the world. And the XServe is entirely built to order. All of our customers can make the configurations they want, and so now they can make up to a million configurations of XServe. So we made a standard configurations to give you an idea of what that might look like. What if you build a quad XServe 
with a gig of memory, an 80 gig hard drive, the lights out management, built-in graphics, unlimited Mac OS X client license, $29.99. Now, if you compare that to the previous XServe, you got single core dual G5s, a fifth the performance of $39.99 previously. So this is a huge jump, five times the performance, $1,000 less price. And again, Dell's been really aggressive on server pricing. So they must be really affordable there. So if you compare even the latest Dells with the latest uh, Xeon processors in them, in them XServe even beats that there. So over and over again, not only making better products, but busting the myth that they're more, more expensive. So the new XServe will be available in October, just a couple months. And our transition's really complete. So thank you all. Enjoy our new systems. Steve? So, our transition's complete. Now let's talk about the software that runs on all these Macs. OS X. What have we been doing for the last five years? We've been putting out releases of OS X. Five major releases starting in spring of 2001, and our last release was spring last year. And because of the progression of this software, I'm really pleased to report that we now have 19 million active Mac OS X users. The vast majority of our installed base is running OS X, and this is fantastic. We've also got a lot of critical acclaim, and as usual, Walt Mossberg said it best, the best and most advanced personal computer operating system. Because of this, I'm also pleased to report that our last major release of OS X, Tiger, has been Apple's most successful software product ever. So what have we been doing lately? What have we, what have we been doing lately? You know, we've had these great five releases. Well, we had a sixth major release that we don't get much credit for. And of course, that's Tiger on Intel that we shipped this past January. You know, porting an operating system to an entirely different processor architecture is no easy task. And our software team did a magnificent job of taking this on the PowerPC and turning it into this on Intel architecture. So, they made it look really easy. And it's gone seamlessly, which has enabled this amazing transition to occur in 210 days. But under the hood, and as you all know, this was 86 million lines of source code that was ported to run on an entirely different architecture with zero hiccups. Pretty amazing. And along the way, we created a way to build universal applications, applications that run on both the PowerPC and Intel. And again, I'm pleased to report that there are now over 3,000 universal applications shipping. And all of us at Apple would like to say thank you, guys. Thank you. You guys have done a phenomenal job in 210 days, getting your application shipping universal. And there's a lot more being announced uh, during the developer conference this week. So this is what we've been doing for the last five years. What has our competitor been doing for the last five years? <laughs> well, they've been trying to ship a, a single release that's had many names, but is now called Vista. And to give you our thoughts on Vista, I'd like to bring up Bertrand Serlet. <laughs> Two years ago at WWDC, we thought we'd poke a little bit of fun at the folks in Redmond who were still working on Longhorn. So we hung in the hallways of the conference those uh, big banners that said, Redmond, start your photocopiers. <laughs> it was all a joke, but they actually took it seriously. <laughs> 
why am I saying that? Well, let's look at the typical screenshot of Tiger and what we've seen on the latest beta of Vista. <laughs> Some similarities here. Let's look at Spotlight. Now, um, with Spotlight, finally, it's easier to find information on your local disks than information on the web. And we have this incredible technology under the hood. After the WinFS debacle, they've been scrambling to understand how to implement that stuff. Now, in terms of UI, they did a major innovation. Instead of having the menu on the top right, <laughs> they put it <laughs> on the bottom left. Another key technology is, of course, the browser technology. With Safari, we kind of restarted innovation and creation in the browser space by having a browser that's both elegant, simple, yet powerful. And in Tiger, we added a personal clipping assistant functionality, Safari RSS. Guess what? IE7 RSS. They even have the same layout for the little kind of filter box on the right. Now, talking of similar layout, um, says our mail program, and for the longest time, a window that had this kind of combo that does mail and calendaring and address book, well, no longer. It's now an independent program. This is iCal, our calendaring program, and this is Windows Calendar. <laughs> they even tried to copy the color scheme <laughs> and didn't get that quite right. Now, this is a logo. Now, you may think that I made up the logo by taking the standard Microsoft Windows logo and adding a nice aqua bubble on top. No, that's the official logo. <laughs> but, you know, underneath it all, it's still Windows. <laughs> It still has the registry as its core. It's still <laughs> DLL hell. And it has this well-loved feature that's called activation. <laughs> if you can't innovate, I guess you just imitate, but it's never quite as good as the original. <laughs> So enough said about Vista. Vista is still in the future for Windows customers, but for us, it's features from our past. It's features we've had in Tiger, in Panther, some since the beginning of Mac OS X, and we've already iterated several times on those features. So to talk about the future, our future, I'm going to turn back to Steve. Great job. Thank you, Bertrand. You know, our friends up north spend over $5 billion a year on R&D. And yet, these days, all they seem to be able to do is try to copy Google and Apple. So I guess it's a good example of how money isn't everything. So this is what our friends are working on. What are we working on? We're working on the next major release of OS X called Leopard. And today, we want to give you a preview of Leopard. So let me start off with some of the stuff that we can't show you. <laughs> There's some top secret features to Leopard that we're going to keep a little close to the vest and not going to show you today. I just want you to know they're there. Uh, <laughs> we, we don't want our friends to start their photocopiers any sooner than they have to. And uh, so we're going to keep a few things a little secret. But we are going to show you and talk about 10 uh, major things that are going to be in Leopard today. And uh, I'm going to ask Scott Forrestal to help me here. So let's start off with number one. Scott? Thanks, Steve. So the first feature of Leopard I'd like to tell you about is support for 64-bit applications. 
Now in Tiger, we brought support for 64-bit at the Unix layer. And that means the Mac Pros that we announced and are shipping today ship with support for Unix because those Mac Pros are based on a 64-bit Intel architecture. But in Leopard, we're taking this support a giant leap forward. We're going to extend the 64-bit support all the way up through our UI frameworks, Carbon and Cocoa, right to your applications. This means in Leopard, you can have a fully native 64-bit UI Carbon application. You can have a fully native UI Cocoa application. And we did this in a completely 32-bit compatible way. So the same frameworks that support 32-bit now also support 64-bit. That means you can run 32-bit applications side by side with 64-bit applications. None of these applications are emulated. None of them are translated. They all run completely natively. So full 64-bit support, top to bottom, that's number one. <laughs> number two, this, this is a big one, time machine. When I look on my Mac, I find these pictures of my kids that, to me, are absolutely priceless. And in fact, I have thousands of these photos. If I were to lose a single one of these photos, it would be awful. But if I were to lose all of these photos because my hard drive died, I'd be devastated. I never, ever want to lose these photos. So what should I do? What does everyone tell you to do to make sure your, your photos are all secure and you don't lose them? Back it up. Right? So everyone says it. You're all saying it. We all know we should back it up. And I know I should back up, uh, but I don't. <laughs> and so we asked our customers. We ran a survey to say, well, who out there is backing up? And the survey said 26%. Only a quarter of our users are backing up their files in any way whatsoever regularly. A quarter. Now, if you dig a little deeper into this, you find that most of these people who say they're backing up are actually sort of periodically, manually, dragging a few files or folders onto a CD and burning that CD. So there's no schedule for this. They might forget. They might not back up all of their stuff. They're really not secure. So when we dig in and say, well, how many of these people, how many people in general are using automated software to make sure they're always backed up and always in a good state? The answer, 4%. Only 4% of us are using automated software to make sure that all of this valuable content is being backed up. Well, we plan to change all of that in Leopard with a feature we call Time Machine. Time Machine automatically backs up your Mac. If you change a file, that file is automatically backed up. And we back up everything. We back up all of your photos, all of your music, all of your documents, all of your files, your folders, your applications, your operating system, your software updates, everything. We back up absolutely everything, which means we can restore everything. So if your hard drive dies, you can buy a new hard drive, put it in your machine, and be right where you were before that hard drive died. We can restore everything. <laughs> On top of this, you can restore a la carte. So if there's one file that you're missing, you can go and restore just that one file. One photo, one, one folder, whatever, you can restore just that one item. We allow you to back up to a, a hard drive or a server. So in this case, you can plug an external hard drive in. We'll automatically notice the hard drive, configure it automatically, and start backing up your machine. But the coolest part about Time Machine, and the reason we call it Time Machine, 
is because we have a whole new way of backing up and restoring your files. Have you ever had an incident where you're working on a document and you do a save and you meant to do a save as and you just overwrote that original and you didn't want to do that? <laughs> in the back row. <laughs> and you wish you could just go back in time before you'd done that and recover that file and bring it back to the future. With Time Machine, you can. Have you ever looked in a folder for a presentation? That presentation's missing, it's not there. But you remember last month you were working on that presentation and it, it was in that folder. Don't you wish you could just go back in time to last month when that presentation was in the folder and you could grab that presentation out of the folder and bring it back to the present? With Time Machine, you can. And you know, let me show that to you now. So here we are sitting on the Leopard desktop. I'm going to bring up the Finder. So this is the standard Finder. On my sidebar here, I have this thing called Important Stuff. And this is, these are the five files that my son and I were working on that, okay, the four files that my son and I were working on. There was a presentation he was working on that used to be in this folder. This is generally when panic sets in. Uh, it used to be here, Dad. What happened? So with Time Machine, no worries. You go down here to the dock. This is Time Machine. Click on that, and we enter Time Machine. <laughs> So as you can see, time is a dimension that recedes back into your desktop, <laughs> back to the beginning. Let me cancel out of that. So here you are at your desktop, and here is Time Machine. You notice the stars are all moving. It's all alive. I have a timeline on the right-hand side here, so I can go ahead and let me go back in time to yesterday. This is exactly as your entire machine stood yesterday. I can go back two days. You know, I'm not sure exactly where that file was, so I can click on this arrow, and it's going to fly me through time until it finds a difference in this folder. Here we go. <laughs> We're going back through time. It's looking for, oh, there it is. So as you can see on the bottom, this file was deleted sometime after Saturday, June 24th. It is here. I can double click to get a preview of it. Yep, this is, this is exactly the presentation he was working on. And now to bring it back to the present, I just click restore, done. I can open up. It's in Keynotes. This is exactly the presentation. It is that easy to go back in time and bring back things that you want to restore. This is Time Machine. Now, Time Machine works with more than just the Finder. It can work with other apps. In fact, it can work with your apps as well. Let me go into the address book, and I'm going to look for Sonia. Now, it's not there. Well, it turns out it a few days ago, I was cleaning up my address book, so I deleted some old contacts I didn't need anymore. I must have accidentally deleted Sonia's. Again, no worries. And our time machine, here we are. Now, if I click on this arrow, it's going to fly through time doing the search for Sonia at every point in the past until I see her coming. There she is. Again, I just click Restore. It pulls that card from the past, brings it back to my address book. Now there's Sonia. It's that easy. Time machine. But as I said earlier, 
the most important thing to me are photos. So let's bring up iPhoto. Now there's an entire roll of film missing from an Italy trip I took here. Again, no worries. Click on Time Machine. Go ahead, get iPhoto. Or not. All right, that's why we have backups. I'm gonna go ahead, bring up iPhoto. <laughs> in the oven. Bring up, <laughs> yes, I wish I could go back in time before that happened. <laughs> Here I am on iPhoto, click, fly through time until it finds those photos, select the photos right in here, hit restore, restores them all right back to the present. There they are now in iPhoto. So that is Time Machine. We think it is absolutely the best way to back up all of your files, everything you have, restore everything, but the coolest thing is the ability to go back in time to restore files and bring them back to the present. Time machine. Number three, I'd like to turn it back to Steve. So the third feature of Leopard that we want to talk about today is we're going to deliver the complete package. Now, what do I mean by this? We've got some really cool software that's out in beta form right now. And we've got other applications that we only ship on new Macs that haven't been available to the installed base. And we're going to ship all of those as part of Leopard. So starting off, of course, with Boot Camp. Boot Camp is software that allows Windows. You can go out and buy a copy of Windows and run it on your Intel-based Mac. And the reaction to this has been very strong. Uh, and since we put Boot Camp out for beta, uh, there's been over half a million downloads, which is great. Obviously, we're finishing up Boot Camp. It's going to be even better than the beta, and it's going to ship as part of Leopard. Another application that we ship on some of our new Macs is Front Row. Front Row gives you access to all of your media, your photos, your music, your videos from across the room sitting on your couch. It's a wonderful way to access your media. The next generation of Front Row is going to be built into Leopard. Another example is Photo Booth. We ship Photo Booth on our, Ma on our new Macs that have the video cameras built in, and it's fantastic. People spend hours on Photo Booth. And we are going to build the next generation of Photo Booth into Leopard and we've expanded the range of cameras it works with so everybody can have fun with Photo Booth. These are just three examples of how we're going to ship the complete package of applications we have with Leopard. Number four, this is a big one. We call it Spaces. Now, what is Spaces? Spaces is a new way of working on your Mac. If you're like me, you're doing a bunch of things at once. You've got a lot of apps running at once. And yet, the tasks you're doing each require a few apps together. And wouldn't it be great if you could take those few apps required for a given task and create a space for them to be in? Another task has its own space with its collection of apps. And to be able to rapidly switch between those in a super intuitive manner. Well, let me show you spaces now. So let me first bring up uh, Mail and uh, Safari. And uh, you know I spend most of my time during the day in Mail and Safari. Have to constantly check email, looking things up on the internet, et cetera. But um, I'm making a website. I'm creating a website. And uh, I'm, as part of that website, I'm doing a podcast. So for my podcast, 
uh, I have got a space over here with uh, GarageBand and uh, iTunes for some music, and I'm making a podcast. And so whenever i am uh, got a few extra minutes, I've answered all my email, boom, I can zip over here and work on my podcast. Very, very simple. Uh, now, I'm also, um, I'm also working on uh, making a website. When my podcast gets done, I'm going to put it in a website. And uh, so I can zip down here and work on my website. I've got iWeb, I've got some images here, and I'm also making a Final Cut movie. And I've created a space for that as well. And so I can zip around these spaces just like this. I can also zip around by just clicking on the icons. Here's Mail. Here's iWeb. Here's GarageBand. Here's Final Cut Pro. Right? And here's my Spaces icon right in the dock. And I can click on this and see all my spaces and just zoom anywhere I want to. Boom, boom. Right? Very cool. I can even do, let's assume that I, you know, I need my uh, web browser to create my website here. I want to see uh, what it looks like. I can just zip this over here. And uh, now it's there. Uh, when I'm done, I can simply move it back. So this is Spaces. And uh, let me go ahead and clean up these apps. And so Spaces lets me create spaces with collections of apps to do certain tasks and super intuitively switch between them instantly. So if I've got an extra moment, zoom. I'm working on my website, zoom. Back to my productivity apps. That is Spaces built into Leopard. <laughs> Number five, I'll turn it back to Scott. Number five is Spotlight. Spotlight was one of the great features of Tiger. It allows you to instantly search for any file on your machine by file name, by metadata, by contents, by all sorts of things. We're going to make Spotlight even better in Leopard. The first thing we're going to do is enable you to use Spotlight to search other machines. So if on your network there are other machines that are sharing files with you, you can now use Spotlight to remotely search them. If you have the permissions to see the files, you now have the ability to search them. This means if you're at home and you have several Macs in the house, you can sit on one Mac and search all the rest of them in the house. We're also adding the ability to search servers. So if in the office, if, the office, if you have a work group server with all the shared assets, then from the comfort of your desk, you can search that workgroup server and find exactly what you're looking for. Next, advanced search. We've heard a lot of feedback probably from many of you in this room that uh, you want advanced syntax for searching. You want Boolean operations. You want to be able to specify the file type right in the search query. We're adding all of that to Spotlight in Leopard. We're also going to take some of the powerful search features we had in the Finder in Tiger and put those right in the Spotlight window as well. So advanced search. Next, we're going to make Spotlight a great application launcher. You can type, bring up Spotlight, type one or two letters, hit return, your application's launched. And we're adding recent items to Spotlight. So when you bring up that Spotlight window, it'll be pre-populated with all the recent things you've been doing recent photos you've been looking at, recent spreadsheets, recent PDFs, recent presentations, everything right there, recent applications. So often, what you're looking for is right there without even doing a search. That is Spotlight for Leopard. Now, number six is core animation. In Cheetah, we brought you core audio. In Tiger, we brought you both core image and core video. And these three core technologies together enable you to easily build media-rich capabilities into your application. Now in Leopard, we're bringing you core animation. Core animation allows you to dramatically increase the production value of your application. We built Time Machine using core animation. 
Core animation lets you take a scene and decompose it into layers. You can have a few layers or you can have thousands of layers. Each of these layers can be text, images, motion video, OpenGL, quartz compositions, almost anything. For each of these layers, you specify a start state, a goal state, and optionally, you can supply some keyframes in between. Now you're done. Core animation will provide and manage the entire animation sequence between those states. So these states can include things like a you know, position, orientation, but also color, size, opacity, all sorts of things. And to really show you the power of this, I've got to show you a demo. So we started with a, uh, a screensaver that we had in Tiger. And this screensaver in Tiger took us around 4,000 lines of code to write. A lot of open jail in there, around 4,000 lines of code. So the first thing we did was rewrite it in core animation. And in core animation, it's 400 lines of code. It's one-tenth the size. But once you get into core animation, this looks boring. We can do so much more. Uh, all these animation, all of these albums, they're on their own layer. So you can move them independently in 3D space. You can also, of course, move the camera around and fly. <laughs> You can pick one album and you know, flip it over and see what text tracks it has for the song track in the back. But even this is just scratching the surface of the power of core animation. Recently, we were running this iTunes commercial where we build a city out of albums. That was a movie. This is being built live. All we're telling core animation is where an album should start, where it should end, and optionally, some keyframes in between. Core animation does all the rest itself. This is not a movie you're watching. It is being produced live on here. It's, in fact, interactive. I can go ahead and uh, I can zoom out. I can pick an album. We fly the camera around to it. Pick another album, flies around. It's just that simple. And this final demo application is still written in half the number of lines as that original screensaver. It takes 2,000 lines of code in core animation to do all of this. So that is core animation. It gives you a lot of power to easily add rich interactive, interactive experiences to your applications. I can't wait to see with what all of you do with it. Thanks. For number seven, I'd like to turn it back to Steve. Good. Mac OS X is so great that we want everybody to have a chance to use it. And that includes people with special needs. And so we are focusing a lot on universal access uh, for Leopard. Uh, we've got some major enhancements to voiceover, a technology we introduced in Tiger. Uh, which is really important. Uh, we're adding Braille support. We're adding closed captioning support in QuickTime. We've got some much faster and better ways to navigate around the whole system. Uh, so a lot of work going in to universal access. And I just want to share one aspect of that with you now, which is voiceover. Uh, and the best way is just to give you a demo. All righty. Let's bring this up. This is just a simple app that we wrote. And I'm going to play you some text-to-speech, which is really important to a lot of people. And uh, I've just thrown in Apple's boilerplate here, the stuff we put at the bottom of every press release. And I'm first going to play you the voice that ships in Tiger. If you go get up your copy of Tiger and have it read you this boilerplate, this is what you'll hear. Apple ignited the personal computer revolution in the 1970s with the Apple II and reinvented the personal computer in the 1980s with the Macintosh. Today, Apple continues to lead the industry in innovation with its award-winning desktop and notebook computers, OS X operating system, and iLife and professional applications. Apple is also spearheading the digital music revolution with its iPod portable music players and iTunes online music store. Now, when that shipped, it was pretty state-of-the-art, but it still sounds pretty geeky. And uh, so 
Let me play you now what's, uh, what Vista is going to have, or at least is what's in their uh, current beta. It's quite a bit better. Let me play that for you here. Apple ignited the personal computer revolution in the 1970s with the Apple II and reinvented the personal computer in the 1980s with the Macintosh. Today, Apple continues to lead the industry in innovation with its award-winning desktop and notebook computers, OS X operating system, and the lift and professional applications. Apple is also spearheading the digital music revolution with its IPO portable music players and iTunes online music store. They don't like our words, I guess, but that's okay. <laughs> it's still much better. But let me play you what we're going to be shipping in Leopard. Uh, it is, we believe, the state of the art. We haven't heard anything uh, quite as good. Apple ignited the personal computer revolution in the 1970s with the Apple II and reinvented the personal computer in the 1980s with the Macintosh. Today, Apple continues to lead the industry in innovation with its award-winning desktop and notebook computers, OS X operating system, and iLife and professional applications. Apple is also spearheading the digital music revolution with its iPod portable music players and iTunes online music store. So. Well, this stuff's really important to a fairly large set of users. And uh, if you're listening to things all day, uh, one of the things these users like to do is speed things up. And text-to-speech systems, generally when you speed them up, the quality goes way down. Listen to what we've come up with for Leopard. We've sped it up quite a bit here. Apple ignited the personal computer revolution in the 1970s with the Apple II and reinvented the personal computer in the 1980s with the Macintosh. Today, Apple continues to lead the industry in innovation with its award-winning desktop and notebook computers, OS X operating system, and iLife and professional applications. Apple is also spearheading the digital music revolution with its iPod portable music players and iTunes online music store. So, <laughs> so that is universal access. We think we're making some progress here. <laughs> next up, <clears throat> next up's a big one. We're making some major enhancements to mail for Leopard. Now, if you're like me, you live in mail. And anything we can do to make mail better, more productive, gets real exciting. So for Leopard, we're doing some really great things. I want to highlight some new creative things we're doing with mail uh, and show you a few of them. The first one is stationary. We're adding stationary to mail, we're adding notes to mail, and we're adding to-dos to mail. So let me take you through what these things are. First, let's start with stationary. You know, I just got back from a vacation. I've got some photos I want to share, and of course I'm going to send them around in an email and it would look something like this. Wouldn't it be great if I could just open some stationery and apply that to my email and have it instantly look like this. Well, I'm going to be able to do that in mail. And this is just a standard, industry standard HTML email. It will show up this way on every, email, every popular email reader on any computer around. So you can send emails like this to anybody and they're going to look like this when they get to the other end. You can also make your own stationery. Let's say you're a school, you've made some stationery like this, you just fill it in, boom, and send it out. That easy. We're shipping a lot of templates in Leopard, and you can make your own and do your own thing if you'd like. So that is stationery. Second thing is notes. If you're like me, I send a lot of emails to myself. I take notes in a compose window and zip it off to myself because my inbox really is where I need to be reminded of things. And so I got notes in my inbox that I've taken myself. There's got to be a better way to do this. There's got to be a special message type that doesn't get lost among the others. And we're adding that for Leopard notes. You can take notes in a special message type. They show up right in your inbox. But there's also a special mailbox called notes, which coagulates them all together so you're not going to miss a thing. Now, a lot of times, we'd like to keep to-do lists. And we could send those to ourselves in email, too. But we'd like something much more powerful. And so we're creating that for Leopard. You can take any, any note as an example. 
And you can just select something and say, make it a to-do. And boom, it is now a to-do. Let's select something else. And boom, it is now a to-do. And I can set priorities and due dates and alarms and all sorts of things for these things. And they show up like this. But it's even more powerful than this. I can take any incoming email message or any other document. I can select something and say, make that a to-do. And it makes it a to-do. But it's not just mail. We've created a to-do service throughout Leopard. And any application can tie into it. Any application can contribute to-dos and view to-dos and check them off, et cetera, et cetera. And so iCal's tied into this. So you make a to-do in mail, you're going to see it in iCal and vice versa. All of your apps can tie into this and have one system-wide to-do service where everything is kept track of. So let me show you a few of these things now. Let's go back over here. And uh, let's bring up mail here. <coughs> so the first thing I want to show you is um, I'm going to compose a new message here. And the first thing I do if I want to use stationary is I might just say show stationary here. And I'll just show you some of the stationary we ship. So these are some simple things here. Again, some simple messages, very easy. Some ones for photos here, as we talked about. And again, you can drop your own photos in here. You can move photos around. You know. Here's some greetings, you know, baby announcements, birthdays, dinners, get wells, you know. You name it. So this is a way, you know, some great invitations, by the way, some birthdays, dinners, et cetera. Now, one way is you can start with a, one of these templates. Or another way you can go about things is to start with a mail message that you've already written. I've got a draft here. Uh, and I'll just start with this. All right, there we go. Boom. And you know, I could have forgotten about stationary. My god, I remember. I could put this in stationary. I just go grab something here, photos. Boom. Puts it in there with all my text and all my photos. I can move photos around if I want. Real easy. So very, very easy to, uh, to add stationary. <laughs> and I've also, of course, got a photo browser. So if I've got some other photos here I want to drop in, I can just drop a photo in like that. This shows me all the photos in iPhoto as an example. So it's very, very easy to, uh, to create stationery. And you can create your own and save it under favorites and access it very easily. Now I want to show you notes. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, go back here. I'm going to create a note. Uh, so let's just see. What do I want to say? I want to say. Uh, Make sure Leopard gets done on time. Uh, you know, um, squash all Leopard bugs and blow away Vista. So those are my notes. And all I have to do is close this. And uh, here it is showing up in my inbox. And here it is showing up in my notes mailbox with all of my other notes here. Here's the one with uh, you know, dropping a PDF in, uh, stuff to do this week, et cetera. So that's how easy it is to create a note uh, in Leopard. Boom, that's simple. Now, <clears throat> let me show you to-dos. So I will go back, and maybe I'll pick uh, you know, one of these, soccer practice. And uh, I will just say, you know. Bring equipment. Let's make that a to-do. And uh, send a reminder to parents. Let's make that a to-do. And so when I go back now, you can see they're added to my note, but they're also added to the to-do server. And uh, here they are right here, these two, along with some other to-dos that I have. It's that easy to make to-dos in this system. So that gives you a little bit of a feel for some of the things 
that we're adding to leopard in male. It's a major, major upgrade of mail that adds stationary, so you can send the most beautiful email messages you could ever imagine, much more impact. We've got notes. You can send rich notes to yourself. You can keep track of them all in a special notes mailbox. And we've got a system-wide to-do service, super easy to turn anything into a to-do in mail or any other app that you wish, and it will keep track of all of them system-wide. So these are just three of the really cool features we're adding to mail in Leopard. <laughs> Number nine, Scott? Number nine is Dashboard. Dashboard is one of my absolute favorite features of Tiger. And the reason Dashboard has been so great is not only because we supplied a really great set of starter widgets, but because all of you have built so many fantastic other widgets. In fact, there are more than 2,500 widgets available for Dashboard today. Now for Leopard, we want to enable even more great widgets. We have two things we're announcing today to help solve that. Number one is something for you developers, and the second one is a feature for end users. Let's go ahead and start with a developer one. Today we're announcing a new tool, developer tool, called Dashcode. Dashcode helps you to design, develop, and debug your dashboard widgets. We start off with a rich, beautiful set of templates. So these are pre-canned widgets with all the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript you need. And all you do is take and modify them slightly to produce the widget you're looking for. We have templates for RSS, for podcasts, for uh, images, for all sorts of things. You take, modify those, build exactly the widget you're looking for. On top of that, Dashcode is a great visual editor for HTML and CSS. So instead of editing in a text document the HTML, you visually lay it out, you set the colors and size and everything else, we'll produce the HTML and CSS for you. We also sh ship with a rich parts library. So we have everything from search fields to buttons to controls. You drag those out. We ship with all the JavaScript for those. Put them in your widget. You're done. We have a nice JavaScript editor. And this is big, a full JavaScript debugger. We've heard a lot of feedback that people wanted a good JavaScript debugger. We've added it. You can set breakpoints. You can evaluate JavaScript expressions. It's fantastic. And that is Dashcode. Now, the next feature, and this is the one for the user, is called Web Clip. We've come up with a way where anyone can turn any part of any web page into a widget. And I really just have to show that to you. OK, so let's go ahead and bring up Safari here. And I'll go to a comic strip that I like. Let's say, uh, uh, actually, I like Dilbert a little better. The danger of Dilbert. OK, so here's uh, Dilbert. So let's say that I'd like a widget of that comic strip. In Dashboard, or now with, with Web Clip, all I need to do is click this button in Safari. It brings me right up into Dashboard. It loads up that page inside this new widget. I can now just lay it out, find exactly the part of the page I'm interested in, drag it to there, and I'm done. <laughs> that. That is how easy it is to create a new widget. Now we, we ship a number of great themes on here. So I can go back here and uh, pick, let's say, this theme here. Boom. There we go. So now, every day, this will update and show me the latest of that comic strip. Let's go build another one. This here uh, is an eBay auction. So let's say I want to track this, uh, this guitar as an eBay auction. 
And I'd like sort of throughout the day to continue to you know, see what the price is, what the bid is. I can create my own widget again, clicking on this. It loads that page right up here in this new widget. Lay it out just like so. Done. I'll apply a theme that makes it look like you know, it was just torn out of the web page. There we go. And this whole thing's live, so I can click through the pictures. It's a live widget of that part of the web page. Let's go do another one. We've had a number of requests from people to turn the, uh, the top 10 download site right here of widgets into a widget itself. <laughs> now you can do it yourself. <laughs> go ahead, drag it over to here, line it up exactly how you want. Done. Now you have your own top 10 downloads, and if you see one you like, click on it, we'll take you right to it. It's all live. Let's say you're interested in the New York Times bestseller list and you wish someone would have created a widget of the top 10 bestseller list. Now you can do it yourself. We just load up that page. It can be any part of any page. Here's hardcover fiction. Drag it to right there. Resize it. Done. Again, I can apply a nice theme to it. Uh, let's go for that. There we go. I now have the top the best sellers for hardcover fiction. Let me do one more. And again, as, as the top seller list is updated, your widget will update as well. The last one I want to do are webcams. There's a lot of webcams out there. And some use uh, QuickTime, some use Java, JavaScript, some use just animated images. You can now turn any webcam out there, no matter what it is, into a widget. Again, I can apply a theme to that. Let me grab that one. Done. So, throughout the day, here you are, working normally. You bring up Dashboard. You bring up Dashboard, and we've just created five live widgets. It is that easy for any end user to build whatever widget they want out of any part of any web page. Find your web page, pick the piece you like, turn it into a widget. Find another web page. Again, for an eBay auction, if you want to watch that for, say, three days, you create a widget really easily, track it for three days. When it's done, just close the widget. So we think with Dash Code, we have a great solution for developers to even more quickly build high-fidelity widgets and with WebClip, we have the ultimate widget to allow anyone to turn any piece of any web page into a widget. And that is Dash Code. For number 10, I'd like to turn it by Steve. Thank you. Number 10, for Leopard, we're going to seriously enhance iChat, our instant messaging client. A lot of us use iChat day in and day out. We're going to make it even better. And so some of the most requested things, of course, are multiple logins, which we're doing, invisibility, which we're doing, animated buddy icons, video recording, so you can record your video chats, and tab chats. Right? All of this we're doing. Uh, as an example, in tab chats, if you've got five conferences going, or message sessions going, you can just consolidate them into one you know, with tabs on the left. So all of the basic blocking and tackling, we're doing all of it in Leopard. But we want to go further than this. You know, a lot of our computers now have built-in video cameras. So you get video conferencing right out of the box. No one else is doing this as well. And uh, a lot of people are starting to use it. It's great. So we want to go even further with this technology. <clears throat> so the first thing we'd like to do is let you have some fun. We'd like to add some photo booth effects to video conferencing. The second thing, it's a little more serious, I guess. We, have, we call it iChat theater. Wouldn't it be great if 
When I get back from vacation, I want to show slides to my family and friends. If I could get on a video conference and have a theater right there, which is an iPhoto slideshow, to show them as I talk them through the slides, right? Or talk maybe a, a business partner through a keynote presentation. Wouldn't that be wonderful if I could do that? And backdrops, which you just have to see to believe. So let me go ahead and show this stuff to you now. So what I'm going to do is uh, just go to iChat. And uh, I don't have a lot of friends. I just fill. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to request a uh, video chat with Phil here. Hi, Steve. Hi, Phil. How you doing? Good. Just back here at the office working away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I want you to help me demonstrate some of this new iChat stuff to everybody. So let's start with photo booth effects. What can you show us? Oh, this is a lot of fun. I can just do cool things. A little Jay Leno look. <laughs> or maybe let's do a little more Picasso-like thing. The performance of this in real time is unbelievable. It's so cool. And I'm willing to do this for you. <laughs> Check this out. You look marvelous. <laughs> Little Cyclops thing. <laughs> so just amazing real time effects that feel just fast and fluid. Well, that's fantastic. It's getting a little weird, but pretty cool. <laughs> um, OK, now let's move on to, uh, to iChat Theater. This is very, very cool. Let's say uh, you want to show me an iPhoto slideshow. Let's, why don't you go into the theater and show me what you can, what you can do now. Sure, this is great. I'm just going to go right into iPhoto, and I'm going to bring up a photo slideshow that perhaps I wanted to show you over vacation. And I just choose to play it. And now inside our iChat, you're watching the iPhoto I'm showing you, the slideshow. That's cool. That's a lot of fun. Well, let's say we got something more serious. You want to give me a keynote presentation as an example. OK. So again, I can go into keynote, bring up a presentation, and uh, choose to show it to you right across iChat. So maybe I'm pitching you on something. I want a little investment to help save the rainforest. And I'm in control of this slideshow. I'm talking to you. I'm clicking on the slides that I want to advance to. In keynote, you're getting the transitions and, and effects all the way across the internet, anywhere in the world. That's very cool. Now, Phil, let's say um, you, you work at our ad agency and you're trying to show me the latest uh, edit of a certain ad. Can we do that? Sure. Yep, you, they, they create so many cool, cool ads. And, uh, and the, the, the ability to show them to us all the way around the world can now be done over iChat. I'm going to bring up an ad, and you can imagine this is a fun one that we wanted to, to show the team that they're working on. And let me just play it, and it's playing from QuickTime. Hello, I'm a Mac, and I'm a PC. Action! 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 Zintite, you okay? No, I'm not okay. I have that virus that's going around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, better, you better stay back because it's a doozy. That's okay, I'll be fine. No, no, do not be a hero. Last year, there are 114,000 known viruses for PC. PCs? Not Max. So, this guy's I think I got a crash. Hey, if you feel like. I don't know. Good. Phil, that's fantastic. Thanks. Now, let's talk about backdrops. You know, wouldn't it be great if you could be somewhere other than you are when you're on an iChat? And, uh. <laughs> I've often wished that. So, show us where, we, show us where you can go, Phil. Uh, this technology is amazing. There's no green screen or blue screen behind me, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to step out of the frame and let iChat set the background. I'm going to come back in, and I'm just going to drag a photo into iChat, and I'm, on, I'm at the beach. <coughs> Maybe I'm in the mountains, the yeah. hiding. Yeah. Can you sing for us? <laughs> I can be anywhere. Look, they didn't face the landing. Uh. <laughs> well, I can be places I've never been before. Taj Mahal. Or cool places like in Times Square. I'm in Times Square reporting directly to you, Steve. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, this is fantastic. What else can you do? Well, if we can do photos, this is at Apple. We like to push the technology even further. Check this out. I'm in Times Square and it's live video. <laughs> anywhere in the world. The moon looks like the Apple store. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I found Nemo. <laughs> and I... this, this one is a lot of fun. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so that backdrop. Yeah. That's fantastic, and it proves once again that life at Apple is a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you, Phil. See you later. Woo! So, <laughs> photo booth effects, iChat theater, just awesome stuff. And backdrops, both still and video. We're really excited about this. We think iChat for Leopard is going to be just a grand slam. So these are just 10 of the many features that are going to be in Leopard. Let me review them here quickly. Full 64-bit, top to bottom. Core animation. More infrastructure in universal access. One of the things we didn't have a chance to talk about, parental controls dramatically enhanced in Leopard. And giving you the complete bundle with Boot Camp 1.0, the next generation of Front Row, the next generation of Photo Booth, great communications technology with iChat that we just saw, with the next generation of Mail that you saw, we didn't have a chance to talk about iCal, but iCal is going full multi-user, and we're supporting the CalDAV standard for that. <laughs> Taking the revolutionary technologies of Tiger to the next level with Spotlight and with Dashboard, you saw Web Clip and developer tools with Dash Code. One of the other things we didn't have a chance to talk about today was Xcode 3. Today we are announcing Xcode 3 at the afternoon session. It is a giant leap in Xcode, and I would uh, suggest that you learn all about it because I think you're going to want to use it. Spaces, a whole new way of working with our Macs. We think this is going to be a very, very big thing. And, of course, Time Machine. Time Machine, we think is going to be a breakthrough in backup and recovery with our entire digital lives on our computer. Time Machine is none too soon. We think it's going to be a fantastic feature. And all of this technology is going to be in Mac OS X Leopard. And we want to get it in your hands as soon as possible. So we have a developer preview, which we're going to put in your hands today. Because we want you to start taking advantage of all this great technology in your apps so that when we get done with Leopard, you've got some awesome apps to show it off. Now, we plan to get done with Leopard and ship it this coming spring. So we are working very hard on this. We think we're going to get it out next spring. So that is Mac OS X Leopard. So, thank you for coming. We think we've got a great week for you. Again, 140 sessions, 100 hands-on sessions, and over 1,000 Apple engineers on site. We've got the new Mac Pros in these hands-on sessions, so you can go get your hands on them and see how fast they truly are. We think it's going to be a great week. Thank you very much, and welcome to WWDC 06. Thanks.